This is a calculation question, so don't be lazy. Make sure you show you're working. Make sure that you check your answer, check your units are coherent, and check through by putting them all through the calculator again to check you haven't made any sloppy powers of 10 errors or anything like that. Check your answer is sensible, but remember sometimes they're trying to ask you to calculate things that do surprise you. So, tennis player uses a racket, hit ball over the net, which is like me. One day I'll do a physics of tennis for you video. I'm looking forward to that, but I really want to get a high-speed camera going on that. Um, anyway, let's um, get this question done. The player stands 12 metres from the net, blah, he throws the ball vertically upwards, hits the ball at 2.5 below the ground, yeah, we'll need this later. Racket leaves the ball horizontally, hmm, they're going to ask us about projectiles in a minute. Velocity of 25 metres per second, ball has a mass of this. Can always get a nice force from that, probably, can't I? Uh, ball is in contact with the racket for 0.04 seconds. Now, this, this bit of information is just used for A. All this can be used for A or B. All right, so that's just understanding the, how a question is organised. Um, the ball is in contact with the racket for mm, average force on the ball. Right, OK, so I know its velocity is this, and I know its um, mass is this. I can you do this in two ways, both of which are using Newton's second law. I can either use F equals MA or F equals MV over T. I should maybe put delta MV, uh, change in momentum over time. OK, so I, I, I mean, they're both exactly the same. I'll just use that one because I've got mass and I've got velocity. OK, so 0 0.06 times 25 over 0 0.04 gives me... Boom, 37.5 newtons. I'm happy with that. I hope you are too. Certainly could if you could see that line on the video. All right, cheers. Okay, next part of this question asks us whether the ball hits the ground within the distance. Okay, so it's not asked us to calculate the range of the projectile. Okay, which, you know, it's, an, it's annoying, isn't it? But you know that's going to move in a parabola. Okay, you know that the initial velocity in the horizontal is 25 metres per second. Okay, and you can figure everything else out. You can figure out the range pretty much from that and the height. Now, whenever you're working with projectiles, you're always going to have to um, start by figuring out how long is it in the air for. Okay, now to do that, you need the, the information they didn't tell you, which is A equals G, which is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and to do that, it's going to be one of your equations of linear motion, because A is a constant, acceleration is a constant. So you go ahead and have a little look at one with A in it, and one with a, a height in it, and one with a time in it. Okay, so it's always going to initially be figure out s is ut plus a half a t squared. Figure out what the time is. Um, in this case, rather than saying s, we could say y. Okay, so it's worth using these letters to be your dimensions. You're trying to figure out x, you're trying to figure out the range, and you know y. Okay, so work in the y dimension first to figure out the time, and then work in the x dimension. dimension. And we know that the initial velocity of the ball um, in the vertical direction was zero. Uh, we don't know that, do we? He hits the ball up at a height of 2.5, but I think we can probably assume that. Okay, um, especially as it says he hits the ball horizontally initially, we can assume that the initial velocity in the y dimension is zero. Certainly when you're playing tennis, you do try and hit the ball at the height because you're, you're more likely to get a good impact, a good um, hit on it if it's not moving when you hit it. So I'm going to simplify that by getting rid of that and I'm going to start calling it y. So y is a half a t squared. I could even change that a into a g. That works quite kind of nicely. Rearrange now for t. So 2y over g rooted is t. So plug in all my numbers. The root of 2 times 
over 9.81 and skip the minus because you can't read a minus. Unless you want to work in imaginary numbers, of course, but we don't. Uh, two, wait there, two times 2.5, 9.81. One, and yeah, it's rooting a lot of it. I didn't really need to do the brackets, but I've done it anyway. 0.71, I'm gonna leave myself an extra sig fig for now. Seconds, okay. Um, that's the time. And then use the time to calculate the range. So now we wanna work out X. What else do we know? Um, we know the speed horizontally, don't we? I'll annotate it on this one. 25 meters per second. Well, at distance is speed times time, so 25 uh, times 0.714. Uh, if you got told to ignore the height from the net, you're not to told to ignore um, air resistance, but that is what we do whenever we do um, projectiles. 25 times 0.714 equals that, 17.85. Okay, um, now is that within the acceptable range? Well, you're told it must land with 6.1 meters from the other side of the net. So essentially the acceptable range is 12 plus 6.1 there. So the acceptable range X max is 12 plus 6.1, which is 18.1 meters. And then determine whether, support it with a calculation. I've done all the calculations and I haven't bothered with anything to do with the net the whole time. And um, I can now just make a conclusion. Yes, um, it does, it lands in. <laughs> Don't know whether it's an ace or not, but there we go. Let's it lands in because 17.85, which is the range, is less than 18.1 meters. All right, I hope that makes sense. Practice using your projectiles, practice doing your projectile calculation. It's always going to be the unknown things like it's zero at the top, it's G, uh, gravitational acceleration is always a set one. Um, work out the time somehow. If the ball goes up, then if the, whatever you're talking about goes up, then down, then the time for the whole thing is twice whatever you work out there. So just remember that factor. But this was from the top at zero in the y dimension. So you're only doing half the parabola shape in this case. All right, I hope that helps. So I hope that was really useful to you. Exam questions are a great way to practice for exams, but don't just do exam questions. There's, if you struggle with that exam question, then you probably need to revisit the theory for that topic. So do that before you have a go at some other ones. If I've made any mistakes, then correct them down below. And if you've got any more questions, then down below as well. Maybe you guys can help each other out. And there should be some um, playlists around here and a subscribe button if you like that and you want to see some more as I'm going to bring it out. All right, thanks a lot for watching.